Honestly, I was kind of stumped on how much of the Persona 5 footage shown during the July livestream I should actually cover. After all, I'm not exactly a very popular channel and well, when it comes to the trailer or the 18 minutes of gameplay preview shown at the show, there's already tons of analysis and translations for them available. Chances are you're seeing some five videos about them with some several thousand of views in the related section in the sidebar right now. Because of that, I don't think there's much merit in me trying to examine the trailer or explain the contents of the preview when you can just watch eight of them for yourself with ease. Rather, I want to talk about something that doesn't have as many videos outright dedicated to it. The cooperation system, this game's update on the social link system from Persona 3 and Persona 4. Now, keep in mind that cooperation might not be the final English term for the system. Social links themselves are actually called communities in the Japanese version and were renamed in localization probably for sake of clarification. That said, in essence, corporations are very similar to social links. They are side stories that you play through in order to develop a relationship between the protagonist and another character, and are symbolized by terror arcana, which are assigned to people you are having the corporations with. The main difference seems to lie in how corporations affect the rest of gameplay. While social links, for the most part, merely gave you an experience boost when fusing new personas, a feature which a lot of players, me included, barely used when playing on the easier modes of the games. Corporations apparently have a lot more diverse and realistic effects on your performance in game. For example, at least two of the characters you have corporations with are confirmed to be renders in the game, who might give you better items or more reasonable prices if you build a friendship with them. The two others seem to be capable of giving you information on things such as the targets of your heists, and they also seem to have some kind of effect on the public's opinion on your group in some ways. This is only a couple of examples on how co-ops might affect the game. In fact, during the livestream so far, Caroline, Justine and even Goro went out of their ways calling the cooperation characters the Phantom Thief's allies quite a few times, making it unmistakably clear that the idea here is that co-ops aren't just friends that you happen to have, but valuable helpers supporting you on your quest. The fact that a good number of the cooperation characters seem to be tied closely into the game's main plot seems to support this. Cooperations relating to your performance in the game to this extent will probably have a big effect on how players decide to play the game, since now they don't only have to take into account which characters they want to be friends with or date when proceeding with their storylines, but also whose personal boons and skills will be more valuable to them when going into dungeons. Uh, this opens a whole new slew of possibilities for how the social dynamics in the game can actually interlock and mingle with gameplay, which should be interesting, especially for a series that has previously had so much trouble balancing its stellar writing with its gameplay, all things considered. That said, let's go through the known corps so far and analyze them a little, alright? Um, Fool is still unknown, but can be assumed to be symbolized by the operations of the Phantom Thieves themselves. Magician to Emperor are unknown, but might be taken by party members. The Hierophant Arcana is Sojiro Sakura, the owner of a rundown coffee shop in a back alley called Luf Run, which the protagonist camps out in and works part-time at. He's described as unapproachable and a man of few words, but also strangely tolerant and passionate when you get to know him. He seems to have made bad experience with people being rebellious in the past and tries to discourage the protagonist from doing anything that might end up dragging others into his messes. His last name also suggests that he's related to Futaba Sakura and he might be his father, albeit this is not confirmed yet. Given that Mr. Sakura is the owner of the coffee shop that the Phantom Thieves are using as their base of operation, um, having a cooperation with him might give a lot of different benefits. For example, he might give the product higher allowances on money or be more lenient with keeping a watch on his activities, stuff like that. We'll see what ends up being in the actual game. 
Lovers to Ermit are probably covered by party members, with specifically Lovers being Anne, Jared being Ryuji, and Ermit being Futaba, based on their personas, of course. The Fortune Arcana co op is Chihaya Mifune, a fortune teller who specializes in reading tarot fortunes in a back alley in Shinjuku. She's polite, sweet, cheerful, and her fortunes are said to be always 100% correct, to the point that people rumor her to be an actual seer. On the other hand, there have also been cases of her trying to recommend people weird stones as good luck charms, so maybe her fascination with the esoteric can go a little too far. In her trailer, she's shown to be reading the protagonist's fortune, uh, the visual effects during which were very similar to when Ego reads Yu's fortune in Persona 4. She's also very confused by the protagonist's fortune, unable to interpret why it appears to be so extraordinarily bad. Given that Chihaya is proficient with tarot cards, the boon befriending her will give the player is probably related to the Velvet Room and Personas, and might help raising your Personas more efficiently. She might also take over Mr. Edogawa's role from P3 and P4 and explain some of the game's symbolism to the player. The Hanged Man Arcana is covered by Munehisa Iwai, who runs a military shop in a back street, and is thus the one supplying your team with weapons and gear this time around. This makes the boon for progressing with his co-op pretty obvious, don't you think? He's also said to have a bad personality, and there are rumors going around that he was a member of the Yakuza, the Japanese Mafia, when he was younger. <laughs> in his trailer, he's shown to have some rather questionable ideas about how to deal with one's problems and seems to ascribe to a fight fire with fire mentality. The protag himself seems to be wary of getting pulled into shady dealings by the guy. And that's saying a lot given that our protagonist spends most of his time planning thefts. The Death Arcana is represented by Tae Takemi, a doctor who has her private practice at the outskirts of town. You might have seen her um, in the early trailers of the game, she's been around for quite a while. She seems to have some very peculiar opinions about how her job should be done, and is readily willing to sell medical supplies because of that, hence why the protagonist uses her as a fantasy. Again, pretty obvious what kind of boon her co-op will bring you. She doesn't seem very approachable to her patients, hence why people tend to spread rumors that make her sound like a witch doctor. Her sarcastic, blunt personality, which she displays in the trailer, probably doesn't help. Temperance is represented by the protagonist's homeroom teacher, Kawakami Sadayo. She is a strict, constantly overworked entire teacher who comes to school with unkempt hair. However, her trainer reveals that she has a secret part-time job at a maid cafe, which may be the reason for her tiredness and bad mood at her teaching job. At her maid job, however, she seems a lot more cheeky and upbeat. With her, I'm not really sure yet what the boom gotten from her co-op will be, but it could either have something to do with academic performance or with the maid cafe, which, as I've previously talked about, is an actual daytime activity in the game. Let's see which it will be. The Devil Arcana Corporation is Ichiko Oya, a tabloid reporter in her mid-twenties. She would write anything just to get a scoop, and has a history of fabricating gossip just to get a story. However, it's also sad that she was a much more serious, more famous reporter writing about social issues in the past. In her trailer, she's seen exchanging information with the protagonist, giving him information about his next target in exchange for a new scoop on the Phantom Thieves. Therefore, it should be pretty obvious that the boon from her corporation will be gathering information on your story targets more easily and in fact I suspect that this co-op might actually be obligatory, seeing how I can't really imagine how you'd progress without it. Love the chart saying low life, by the way. The Tower Arcana, interestingly called the House of God, one of its alternate names on this new card design, is represented by Shinya Oda, a great school kid who's a master at first person shooters and usually found setting new high scores in the arcades of Akihabara. He's apparently made a name for himself in the online FPS community as a child prodigy at the genre, but at the same time, he also seems to admire the Phantom Seed for their strength. In his trailer, he's seen putting the protagonist to a shooting game training from hell, while enduring gossip about his bad personality from bystanders. 
it can be assumed that the boon from his co-op will have something to do with the aim or power of sniping weapons in battle. Maybe we'll finally have a way of making sure that something like Yukari's bow never ever happens again. I can dream. Next we have the Star Arcana, represented by Hifumi Todo. She is a shogi player, visiting the same school as Yusuke Kitagawa. For those who don't know, shogi is a Japanese variation of chess, in which one is allowed to take captured pieces from the enemy and use them for themselves. In Hifumi's case, she seems to be the waning champion of the women's shogi league, and people keep being astonished by how someone so beautiful can also be such a chess mastermind. According to her profile, she seems incredibly preoccupied with her chess career and supporting her mother, and spends her days gathering more data to improve her tactics, which can also be seen in her playing against the protagonist in the church in her trailer. However, her profile also hints that there's more than that to her. I'm not entirely sure on what the boon from her co-op will be, but given that chess is a very logic-based game, I'd assume that it's either related to battle tactics, or to one's knowledge stat. Okay, the Moon Corporation is Yuki Mishima, a classmate of the protagonist who is obviously named after the famous revolutionary Japanese writer Yukio Mishima, with an O. He's a member of the volleyball club who's stressed out by the fact that he gets injured during training a lot. He also happens to be a huge fanboy of the Phantom Thieves and even set up an entire website dedicated to supporting them in their endeavors. He's gathering people's opinions and polls and even passing information on to the Phantom Thieves themselves. As such, Yuki's co-op, like Ichiko's, will probably have the advantage of making information gathering easier in one way or another. Generally, Yuki seems to be a rather mysterious character so far, since we don't know yet how his volleyball playing really relates to his support of the Phantom Thieves, but he seems incredibly dedicated to them and his name pops up a couple of times in the other World Navi app during gameplay previews. Oh, by the way, Yuki O Mishima, the real-life writer Yuki is based on, wrote a whole book about having to suppress his sexuality as a teenager because he was gay. Just wanted to mention that detail. And finally, the Sanakana is represented by the cooperation of Taranosuke Yoshida, a strapping politician holding soapbox speeches by Shibuya Station. Greet Hachiko for me! Despite him actually being a talented orator, he's lost a lot of trust in his 20 years of career. No thanks to him missing important conferences, embezzling party phones, and calling his voters idiots by accident. Uh, so, people don't really pay his words any mind anymore. A shame, given that what he is trying to point out is the very fact that young people's opinions should be given a lot more weight in regards to the country's future, one of the game's big themes. Now, given that Yoshida is a politician, there are definitely a lot of things cooperating with him could get the party. However, as of right now, I don't have any concrete ideas as to what his boon could be. If you have any, please leave them in the comments. In fact, this goes for all of the co-ops. A lot of what I've said about these characters so far is, of course, my personal theories and opinions. So I'm sure other people have come up with a lot of other different ideas and have figured out more details that I didn't mention, or have a lot more detailed ideas on what kind of boons you might get out of the corporations. Please go ahead and write me in the comments what you think. Anyway, that's it from me for now. Right now I don't really have any other concrete Persona 5 videos planned, but if there's anything you want to hear me talk about, feel free to tell me in the comments and I'll try to get to it. Likewise, I'd really appreciate it if you liked this video and subscribers are of course always welcome. Talking about subscribers, I just cracked 500 last night, which was really a pretty cool moment for me, in all honesty. Really, I don't know how to thank you guys for watching my videos, leaving comments and everything. It's kind of weird that I'm able to do this. Even it's just an amazing experience to at least to get to try and do this and I couldn't do this if I didn't have an audience, however small. I'm really thankful for every last one of you. I'm thankful for all your support. Something among the, those lines or... Oh. <laughs> oh my god, I'm, I'm starting to ramble, am I not? Bottom line, you guys are awesome. 
Don't you ever forget that. Well then, I'm really pumped for Persona 5. Really pumped to be able to talk to you guys like this. I'll see you guys in my next video. Later and bye!